Hi there, Chris, Chapman the Cap, Mojo Legends. Some time ago, we launched a service called Ask the Chat, whereby we invite people to contact us to ask us technical questions about motorcycle clothing. So, for example, how do thermal layers work? What do I need in terms of base layers? What's the difference between a laminated membrane and a drop liner membrane, and so on. And one of the questions that's come up a lot within that service is, what is best? leather motorcycle clothing or textile motorcycle clothing and today I'm going to try to provide an answer on what is a very hotly debated topic. Now there are those who have worn leathers forever and those guys won't consider wearing anything else. For them the only thing that is safe on a motorbike is a leather suit of some sort and we see these guys in the shop they come in and we might have a conversation with them about some of the benefits of textile clothing and they will greet whatever we say with a degree of scorn. They will say anything to justify the decision that they have taken to always wear leather. That kind of defense mechanism is not, in truth, particularly unusual. It's all about avoiding what psychologists would call cognitive dissonance. And that entails selling, telling ourselves and others, if necessary, the little stories that justify our, our actions, even if in some ways those stories don't particularly hold water. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I want to buy myself a classic MV Augusta. That bit's true. It's not a cheap bike. That bit's also true. And I would need to justify spending this money, both to myself, but also to Sarah. So the next time that I sat down with Sarah, I would tell her about what a great investment a classic bike like an MV Augusta would be. I would tell her how on a classic MV, we will never lose money. I would talk about the cheap insurance because it's a classic bike. I would explain how even though it was an exotic bike back in the day, the particular bike that I'm looking at, it's a fairly simple bike, so it would be easy to maintain. I might tell her that because it's a slow bike, I'd be much safer on a bike like that than a modern sports bike. And I will need to do this to avoid the paralyzing conflict in my head that might cause me to step back from taking an action that I've decided that I want to take. Now, this is what the guys who have been wearing leathers have been doing over a period of many years. And that's why this subject is so emotionally, emotionally fraught. And I've been here before and I can tell you that the guys who will only ever wear leather outfits can become very agitated on this particular subject. As a seller of motorcycle clothing, we do not sell one-piece leathers. And that leads some people to question whether we here at Motor Legends have some kind of bias or some kind of agenda. My view, perhaps predictably, is that we don't. I personally have a one-piece leather racing suit. Sarah also has one. Hers is a little bit more colorful than mine. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. It is true that one feels very protected, you feel very safe in a one-piece suit. But we would only wear them on the track because that's where a one-piece suit, or that is what a one-piece suit has been designed for. And if you have an accident on track, a one-piece is exactly what you want to be wearing because leather is naturally very abrasion resistant. And that's important if you come off at 100 miles an hour. Leather slides really well because it's superbly smooth. Textiles don't, so if you come off at that kind of speed on a road wearing a textile seat, suit, you'll turn and tumble, and that's not as good. I have to say that I also have a two-piece leather suit, and on some rides, in some conditions, that's my favorite form of attire. So I don't think we do have an agenda here. But I have to say I'm not a particular fan of wearing something like a one-piece racing suit on the road. I think such a garment is totally impractical. A one-piece leather suit is really quite difficult to walk around in and not look like the hunchback of Notre Dame. It's fine if all you're doing is walking from the pit garage and getting onto the bike, but it's less appropriate if you ride somewhere and then you decide you want to have a walk around a town. Let's say you want to go into a cafe or spend a day at a show or a motorcycle event or a motorcycle race. And of course, a one-piece leather suit is a major pain if you want to have a number two. Now, if we go back to that cognitive dissonance thing that we were talking about earlier on, the guys who ride in one-piece leather suits can provide lots of rationales about 
why that's the best choice for riding on the road. Number one will always be safety and protection. And of course, there is some truth in that because leather, as we've mentioned, is naturally very abrasion resistant. But abrasion resistance is nowhere near the issue on the road that it is on the track. On the track, if we come off, we can slide for 20 or 30 meters. Come off, we end up on the grass or in the kitty litter. But on the road, that is very rarely the case because our roads are narrow and busy, full of cars, lorries and buses. And our roads are bordered by trees, by fences, by walls. So if we come off at speed on the road, we don't tend to slide that far. Instead, what happens is we hit things. And when we hit things, it's the armor, it's our body armor that is gonna protect us. So talking about the body armor that in most suits you're gonna find in the elbows, in the shoulders, in the hips, in the knees and in the back. And when you hit things, when you collide with something once you've come off the bike, whether you're wearing textile, a textile garment or a leather garment is going to make very little difference to the outcome. So the truth is that in road accidents, the benefits of wearing leather are far less than people perceive them to be. What I want to do now, I want to move the argument on a little bit. I want to talk about not just one piece leathers, but leather garments in general. Now, leather garments work well across a fairly narrow range of climatic conditions. So as long as it's not too hot or too cold and provided it doesn't rain, you can ride comfortably all day in a leather suit. But if it's really hot, a leather outfit will bring you very quickly to a boil. And that's because leather doesn't breathe particularly well. It doesn't vent well, it doesn't breathe well. And that's fine if you are a MotoGP rider, you're out on circuit for 45 minutes, that's not an issue. But it's gonna work less so if you are, or less well if you're in the saddle all day. People will say, but you can have perforations in a leather garment, but that's not gonna give you true breathability. It's not gonna give you proper venting in the way that we see it. What happens when it's hot? We sweat. That sweat, or sweating is the body's natural way of cooling itself down. So the sweat comes out, has to turn to a vapor, escape, and when that happens, it draws heat out of the body. If the sweat cannot escape from the garment because it can't pass through the leather, you are just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. It is different but similar for similar reasons when it gets cold. Now, leather clearly has no natural thermal properties. So what happens is if it's cold and you're wearing leather garments, you put some layers on. And what the layers are doing are insulating body heat. When you're insulating that body heat, you are going to sweat. And what is going to happen is because that sweat again can't turn to vapor, it can't escape, you're going to get wetter and wetter. And what that means is that you are creating conditions where body heat can escape far faster. In fact, the figures that I've read suggest that body heat can escape through a wet environment 20 times faster than through a dry environment. So if it is cold, however many layers you wear, a leather garment is not going to be the right way of staying comfortable, as it were, on the bike. Of course, the news is worse still if it rains, because firstly, most leather garments have no membranes. But leather is just not a good material in the rain because it's going to soak the rain in. It's what's called hydrophilic. So imagine you take a chamois cloth and you dunk it into a bucket of water. That's what happens with, with leather. It just soaks the rain in. The result is clearly not very comfortable. And I can remember in particular, one journey I did from Clermont-Ferrand up to Calais in a day, it was raining the whole day. It was absolutely horrific. I wouldn't want anyone to have to repeat that. So whilst I wouldn't deny that leather is incredibly strong, in any kind of extreme conditions, leather is quite swiftly going to reach what we call its level of incompetence. Now, as bikers, we want to always be as comfortable as we can be on the bike. And that's why, in truth, one might often choose to wear textiles over leathers. Depend upon the weight of the yard and the way it's woven, a textile garment can be particularly breathable. Let's face it, a mesh jacket is a little more than just a loosely woven textile jacket. So when it's hot, the cool air can pass through the fabric to reach the body to cool itself down, and our sweat can escape 
the body's natural way of cooling itself down. If we take a heavier weight material and weave it more densely, we create a fabric that is much stronger. Although in truth, you're never gonna create anything that's quite as strong in our view as a leather garment. When you add a membrane to a textile garment, obviously it becomes waterproof. The beauty is, however, of a waterproof textile garment is that water does not soak into a textile fabric in the way that it does into a leather garment. So the most waterproof garments on the market are always going to be textile based, be they drop liner or laminated. You can, it is true, put a membrane inside a leather garment. Now, to understand the problems with that, we need to understand what a membrane is. A membrane is a thin polythene style sheet, millions of tiny little holes. And it works on the basis that the raindrops can't get in, but our sweat can escape. Thereby, therefore, we stay dry from the outside because the rain can't get in, and we stay dry from the inside because our sweat can escape. But as we've discussed with leather, the vapor cannot escape out of the garment in the way that it can in a textile garment. So it doesn't work particularly well in the rain because we just get wet from the inside. Lastly, textiles are better when it comes to riding in cold conditions and staying warm. Staying warm is all about insulating body heat. And textiles are better because the sweat that is generated when we're insulating our body heat can escape. And because it can escape, we don't get wet from the inside. And because we don't get wet from the inside, we don't lose body heat. So in nearly every respect, textile garments are gonna be nicer and more comfortable to ride in than leather garments in all but the most benign of weather conditions. And that's crucial from what we call a passive safety perspective. In motorcycling, we talk about active safety on one hand, passive safety on the other. Passive safety is all about putting yourself in a situation where you are totally comfortable and relaxed on the bike so you can concentrate on what's going on around you. Active safety, by contrast, is about the physical components that we put around our body that can protect us in the event of an accident. The dilemma is that there is a trade-off between passive safety and active safety. So if we're pursuing a strategy of active safety, we are going to wear the thickest possible leather and the heaviest, most energy absorbent armor. And what this means is that if we have an accident, we will bounce better. But because we will lose mobility on the bike and because we're going to risk getting either too hot or too cold or too wet, we are going to compromise passive safety. And almost certainly what that means is that we are going to increase the chances of having an accident in the first place. Now, in our view, staying alive on a motorcycle is about diverting all of your faculties to the job in hand. And only if you are totally relaxed on the bike can you, can you concentrate properly on the road ahead, the effects of the weather, the other traffic, and so on. And in particular, that guy up ahead in the transit van on the left who's turning right and is still on his mobile phone. In conclusion, after a day on the bike, we all clearly want to return home in one piece. And we take the view that the clothing that you wear can have a huge bearing on this eventuality. Our view is that if the temperature rises steeply or falls sharply, or if it starts to rain hard, you are quickly going to come to the realization that wearing leather was a mistake. Of course, those who are leather devotees will protest that all you need is a set of waterproofs and some better layers. And it is true that they will improve the experience. But in any kind of extreme weather conditions, you are never going to be totally comfortable on the bike if you're wearing leathers. So where do we get to? In life, there are no rights, there are no wrongs, there are just shades of opinion. So you will have to decide what works best for you. But for me, there are times when, regardless of what I've said, I still prefer to wear leather but I cannot ignore the UK weather. So most of the time, if I'm looking to stay warm, or if I'm looking to stay dry, or if I'm looking to stay cool, I would choose a textile garment over a leather one. But as ever, in a comparison like this, there are no winners.